This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at the new color tools and color correction inside Final Cut Pro 10 version 10.4. Hi, this is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you the brand new hue and saturation curves. There's one more thing I got to talk about before we throw this open for questions, and that is the incredible hue saturation controls. What the hue saturation controls allow us to do is to do secondary color correction. For instance, here, he's doing some dancing on an old rusted train engine, except he didn't get the memo. He wasn't supposed to have a blue shirt. He was supposed to have a green shirt. Oh, we got to go back and reshoot, except it was in Brazil. The company's based in Los Angeles. We got airfare, and it's just wrists are being slashed, wailing and rending of garments. You know the speech. Select the clip. Go up to hue saturation curves, and let's add that correction. What these allow us to do is to select a color, that's the first word, and change it to a different color, or select a color and change its saturation, or change a color and change its luma value, or select a luma value, change its saturation. It allows me to map one thing to another. Let's take a look at something really simple, changing a color grab the eyedropper tool and select something on the blue shirt. It adds a blue control point and two feather points. This is similar to doing a color mask, but so far it's one click. If I drag up or down, I'm rolling this along the 360 color value. So I'm gonna go from red to blue to green. Let's just set it to here, right about there. And now as I play the clip, Is that cool or what? Well, we want to make it red. Everything that was that blue color, including the tops of his tennis shoes or the band on his hat, has now been changed. Now, remember how hard it was to get a really good color mask using the old color mask? This becomes really, really easy. Another example. She didn't get the memo she was supposed to wear a blue safety jacket. Select the clip, go to hue saturation, apply it. We're gonna select this color right here and change it to blue. Uh, let's do right about here, right there. Except that's too bright a blue. So we're going to go to hue and saturation. Sorry, not saturation. We're going to do hue and luminance. Click this and decrease the luminance. Now the whole clip has been changed. Hang on while I pick my jaw back up off the floor. See this red bag? I need to have that red bag be more saturated. Click here. Click on the red bag, pump the saturation up. Or I want it to be desaturated, pull the saturation down. I want to pump it up. This is where we started. This is where we ended up. This is the sort of thing you can just play with forever. Another, oh, here's another example. Try to do a color mask on this. I want to change the color of his pants. They're obscured by the snow. It's just, can't be done. So watch this. It's just, yeah. Okay. There's our clip. We select the clip, hue saturation curves, select the eyedropper, select his pants. Right about there. Eyedropper, pants, pull the saturation down. About there. Eyedropper, pants, pull the luma value down. Up too much because I'm changing the background. All right, right about there, and play it. You got to admit that is pretty darn cool. At this point, I want to change the color of her top, so we're going to change the hue saturation. Click this, and let's change it to something 
pretty obvious right here, except her lipstick is changing color. We can still add masks. While there's almost no value in a color mask, given what I can do with hue saturation, there is a value in shape masks. So I'll add a shape mask, turn it into a rectangle, pull it down here, pull this down so it just encompasses her shirt. The top box is feathering. I don't need it to be feathered too much. And now as I play this, I've changed the color of her top, except I would like also to be able to increase the saturation of her face. So outside the mask, I'm going to click outside, I want to change, I want to go all the way to the bottom, see where it says orange versus saturation. This is set for skin tones. I can just pump this up and notice how I'm increasing the saturation of her face globally. I could do that. So I could use this or I could select the eyedropper tool and pick the color that I want to boost. Put a frame in here and just pump that up a little bit. So I've changed the color of her shirt. I've increased the saturation of her face. I could also, if I wanted to, let's see, where did that woman in green go? Right here. I want to decrease the saturation of that woman in green. So I'll go back up to hue versus saturation. Eyedropper, green pull this down so it's a little less saturated. So I now have her face is saturated, the shirt has changed color, and the woman walking through the frame in green is not as saturated so it doesn't distract the eye as much. The things we can do with the hue saturation curves are stunning and amazing. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at the new color tools and color correction inside Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 242. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. Membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours, on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.